Hi guys, it's April, and I need to talk to you about these books right here. It has to happen. So I will do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews, as always. I will have the non-spoilery section up front, followed by the spoiled section in my word, thought, dump, things area after that. I'll let you know when that transition happens, because I don't know what you do with your life. I don't know if you deal with spoilers well. I want you to come back, so... I'm, I'm just gonna let you know when these things happen. Now this series right here by Tamara Pierce is the Immortal series. This is the second series published in her Tortal universe. Now it is the fourth chronologically because of everything that's happening with the new releases and all of that excitement. But this series includes Wild Magic, Wolf Speaker, Emperor Mage, and The Realms of the Gods. This series centers around a young girl named Dane who has this affinity with animals. She doesn't know where it comes from or why it is, but she has this ability to communicate with animals fairly well. And throughout this series, she starts to discover where this root of this power comes from, how it can be used, and finding more of herself. This is the first series I ever picked up in Tamara Pierce's Tortal universe, and it is by far the one I connect with the most because I love me some animals, and when you have the ability to take care of animals and to speak to animals, it just calls to my heart. So I really love this series. And going back and rereading these so I can give you this review now because that's what I do. I connected to that nostalgia level again, but I also started to realize that this is really early on in Tamara Pierce's writing, so it's not as flushed out as some of her later works are. I almost want more of that here. There's so much that goes on in this whole series, and there's a little bit of that depth lacking. I loved it because it was the characters that I'd come to love in the Alana series, and then here you have Dane, who is growing up, learning her powers, learning how she can help save Tortal, and coming into her own. Dane as a character is fairly interesting. At the beginning, she starts out kind of annoying and very naive. She has this very small view of the world, and she's dealt with a lot of these prejudices, and so she sees the world through this lens of this prejudice. So she stopped herself from doing a lot of things because of that. But as the series goes on, she grows up, she becomes older, she becomes wiser, and she starts to see these shades of gray, especially when you start to bring the immortals into the Tortal universe. Now, the immortals are things such as unicorns, sirens, dragons, all of those very fantastical creatures have found their way into Tortal. These immortals and them breaching into the human realm is all wrapped up into Dane and her abilities and all of this stuff. So you get to see this very wild magic meeting heads with this fairly interesting combination of mythical creatures from all over the world, all different kinds of cultures. I love seeing that in books. And so you just see Dane come into her own, find herself, and then realizing that even though one thing seems like it's evil, by its nature it might not be. I think that is what I love most about this series, is seeing that growth and learning that setting up biases and prejudice helps nobody. Because there's more to anybody, to any creature, to anything, than actually exists. Like I said, this is by far one of my favorite in the series. Though looking back now, I could see where there could have been more. It could have been, been so much more, but for the time period that this was released in, this was everything. I loved it. You had this strong female character who isn't necessarily strong in the same way Alana in the Song of the Lioness series is, but in her own right, Dane is a very strong woman. And just seeing that played against the lioness, because all of those characters do appear in this story here, it's a build-off of that series, which I liked, so you get to see all of that come together. So overall, I highly, highly recommend this for anybody who loves animals, who loves fantasies, and loves seeing all of those fantastical creatures just balled up into one great big mass. I enjoyed it so much. So this is the part in which I say, hey, I'm going to start giving you some spoilers. So if you don't want to spoil yourself for this book, go away and come back later because I want to start a conversation about these books because they're pretty much part of me now. It's a thing that happened. So the one thing I have to mention here in this spoiler section, in this word dump section, is the romance in this series. It's, I've always loved the pairing of Dane and Yumar that... 
ever since I was young, they were my OTP. I love them to death. Going back now, I can see the start of some of that romance kind of build in the third book, but it's kind of jarring in the fourth book where all of this starts to just kind of dump out. <laughs> There's like no warning and all of a sudden it's like all this thing here and it at points it feels really really awkward and part of me wonders if it was something that Pierce just saw kind of sort of happening so she went with it and she went with it strongly or if it's just because of Dane's coming of age that she finally started to see this kind of stuff, that she started to feel this kind of stuff, which makes sense to me in a way. I love a slow burn. Give me a book with a slow burn and I am all over that sucker. But here you kind of all of a sudden got this, hey, we almost died, let's make out kind of concept. And I think when I was young, I really truly enjoyed that. I mean, it got me all kinds of giggly. But here I'm kind of like, well, this is just a little bit awkward. I mean, I like it, but it's still a little bit awkward. Okay, it's a lot of bit awkward. I mean, that's probably my biggest thing about this series right now, as of this reread, is is that romance. It's, it's something that I've kind of idolized in my brain, I won't lie, but going back, I can see where it's kind of weird at the same time. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Let me know down below if you've gotten this far in this video what you think of that pairing in it of itself. And it kind of comes down to the fact that this was written very condensely and there wasn't a lot of build out of the characters throughout this series a lot of the time. I mean there was some and it was there but by today's standards and how in-depth a lot of these YA books become, you start to build up the standard and I almost wanted a little bit more of that in this book. And maybe that's just because I've come off of Tempest and Slaughter and the backstory of Numar that I'm like, I know this character so stinking well now that I want to see a lot of that here. And you do see it, but it's just not as gritty as it is in the Numar series. I know she's not gonna go back and rewrite this at all. Part of me almost hopes that the Numair Chronicles pulls through the Immortal series so that you can see some of it from Numair's perspective. It's probably not gonna happen, but I would love to see that drama build out from Numair's perspective. It's just something that would just make my day. It would. It really, really would. So that is all I have for you for this review. Tell me down below if you have read the series. I'm assuming that you have since you've gotten this far or you're interested in reading the series because you continue to listen to me babble. I gotta give you guys props. Tell me down below your thoughts so we can start a conversation and I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.